Welcome to Lowndes Legal Talk, where we share perspectives on legal and business issues affecting you. Hi, I'm Brian Lawrence, and I'm an attorney at Lowndes, and I'm joined by Melody Lynch, who's a shareholder in our litigation practice group. Our conversation today focuses on how to best handle virtual depositions. Hi, Melody. Hi, Brian. It's nice to be with you today. So last time we spoke, we discussed how to best prepare for virtual depositions. Let's talk about things to consider during the actual deposition. By far, the biggest challenge in a virtual deposition is that there are so many people involved. So you have the witness, you have the lawyer taking the deposition, you have the lawyer defending the deposition, you have the court reporter, you have clients, potentially other parties, if there's other parties involved in the litigation and their counsel as well. So it's very important that only one person at a time is talking in order for the court reporter to accurately transcribe the record. If you're the witness, my best advice is that you listen to the question that's being asked and then you just pause, take a breath and don't do anything for a second. You're that will give you the space to hear if there's an objection that's gonna be on the record. If anyone has a question or clarification, and it also gives you the opportunity to think about your answer before you respond. So you may be thinking to yourself, what is an objection and what do I do with an objection on the record? The only proper objection to a deposition under the Florida Rules of Civil Procedure is one to form of the question. So what that looks like is your lawyer would say, objection to the form. That would go on the record and would be argued at a future court proceeding. It's nothing you need to worry about. You just want to give your lawyer the time to do that before you answer the question. That's why that pause is so important. And then you will answer the question just like you would if there wasn't an objection. There are very limited circumstances where your lawyer will direct you not to answer a question. Those are things like if there's a protective order in place and a court has said you're not supposed to talk about a certain topic during the deposition, or if the question calls for you to divulge attorney-client privileged information, in those instances your lawyer could tell you don't answer the question and then of course you should heed that advice. So in addition to ensuring that everybody takes turns when talking. Is there anything else you recommend paying close attention to? Yeah, if you don't hear the question that's being asked fully, ask for clarification. If you don't understand the question, don't guess. Just stop and say, Brian, I didn't fully understand that question. Could you rephrase it in a way so that I can understand it? Another piece of advice that I like to give clients is if you're asked to give a list of something, all the people that were there that day or all the documents you reviewed in preparation for your deposition, never get to the end of that list unless you're 110% certain that that's all you reviewed. Because our minds are, you know, many times we're talking about events that happened months or even years ago. So when you're giving a list, I like to say, I recall that I talked to you know, Brian, Adam, Heather, Jessica, and there may have been a few other people or whatever the case may be so that you're not boxing in your answer when you may recall something later in the deposition or at another time when you're prompted differently to respond to the question. And you mentioned uh, documents earlier. What have you found to be the most effective way of handling them during the deposition? The first thing for the witness is when you're given a deposition, whether you're handed a physical document or whether you're shown it on your screen, is to stop and look at the document. The court reporter's transcript is never going to say, the witness reviewed the document for two and a half minutes prior to answering the question. The record simply will never say that. So take all the time that you need. You could be shown many, many documents at your deposition. You may have seen these documents just a few days prior in depo prep, or you may not have seen the document ever. So it's important that you stop 
and first review the document and make sure you know what document it is. The other thing I think is really important, Brian, is to make sure that we're on the same page in terms of how we're identifying the documents. When I'm taking a deposition, I like to bait stamp the documents. That's a simple numbering system at the bottom of the deposition that lists a party name and numbers sequentially for documents so that we can be on the same page. But if you're the witness and the lawyer taking the deposition didn't do that, just make sure that you know exactly what you're talking about. Identify the document. You may be given several and you may be asked to turn in the middle and talk about a document. So for you, make sure you clarify on the record, I'm looking at the email dated January 10th, 2018. Is that the correct email? And then allow the lawyer to confirm for you that you're at the right place so that there isn't a miscommunication and if you have record. If you had one warning during, uh, one wording regarding virtual depositions, what would that be? If you're the witness, the number one thing to remember is to tell the truth. That is priority number one. Make sure you're always telling the truth. If you're not the witness and you're the client and you're observing another witness, look out for witness coaching. In the age of virtual depositions, it's harder to police malfeasance from a lawyer who could be texting their client an answer or texting their client to change an answer or to answer in a, a deposition in a different way. When we're all in the same room together and we're looking at each other, it's much easier to watch out for that kind of conduct, but it's very hard in a deposition today over Zoom. I'll also tell you, Brian, I think it's important that you get your errata sheet. So at the end of a deposition, if you're the witness, you're asked by the court reporter, do you want to read your deposition or do you want to waive the right to read it later? And generally pre-COVID-19, I would say to a client, if you're comfortable with the testimony that you gave and we don't believe there was any lack of communication on the record, you can waive the right to read it again. Most people, after they sit through a deposition that's a half or full day, they don't want to relive it. They don't want to read it again, and that's okay. But in the COVID-19 era, I think it's very important to take the opportunity to read the deposition to make sure that it's very clear that everything that you intended to say and that you believe you did say on the record is actually in the transcript because sometimes with the virtual platforms, if we're talking over each other, the court reporter won't be able to hear that, won't accurately transcribe the record, and a critical piece of information could be missing. So take the opportunity, read your deposition, and then you're given what's called an errata sheet. And if there's anything that needs to be corrected, that's the place where your lawyer can help you make the corrections and then submit it through the errata sheet. Thanks, Melody. You've shared a lot of really great information about virtual depositions, um, which is obviously very helpful in light of the current pandemic. Of course, my pleasure. And thanks to all of you for joining us. If you have any questions regarding virtual depositions, feel free to contact us. We're here to help. Thank you for joining us for Lowndes Legal Talk. For more information about today's topic or to learn more about our attorneys and practices, please visit lounge-law.com.